In today's video, I want to talk to you about the book, The Way of the Superior Man. The way that I want to approach this piece is by sharing kind of the general ideas about the book and my big takeaways and then how they've related to my life. For me, the older I get, the closer I get to potential fatherhood or potential marriage and settling down with a partner, the more masculinity comes into my mind. I think about it more. It's just something that's more important to me. How can I be a better man? I've been doing a lot of reading, research around this sort of stuff. And so it's just been interesting. It's been on my mind. So I wanted to revisit this book. As always, I'll have everything kind of timestamped up below. So let's jump into this. The first big piece about this is he talks about men having a purpose, finding your purpose, finding your mission and really going for it. And this is the core idea of concentric circles. What David talks about is this idea of your purpose, your meaning, your calling actually looking like concentric circles, less like one calling for your entire life and more like you're peeling back the layers of the onion. And as you continue to go through your life, you will stumble on new things, you'll have new ideas, have new inspirations. And to me, this really resonated. These cycles of strong Pacific action, followed by periods of not knowing what the hell is going on, are natural for a man who is shedding layers of karma in his relaxation into truth. And so for me, you don't have to do the same thing forever. Because a lot of us don't know what we're supposed to be doing in life. The whole key is you have an idea or a feeling and to just head towards that thing. And as you head towards it, you will start to peel away layers of the onion, you'll get more information about yourself, what you really like, and you'll be able to get closer to what you really love, but you have to take action. I like this. As you peel back layers of the onion, new ideas and identities will reveal themselves. So purpose and the mission doesn't stay the same forever, and that's okay. There's this feeling when you know you're on the right path. And for me right now, creating these videos, making these pieces, writing these poems, doing these videos, it all feels like I'm on the right path. I don't exactly know where this is going. At the time of writing this, my videos get like 50 views. So there's no real proof that it works other than it feels right. This great combination of art and music and research and science and video and all these things that kind of come together and it feels like the right path. So for me, I'm following it. Even if, even if it isn't going where I think it's going to go, the whole point is that I'm on a path and I'm balls deep in it and I'm just going for it. And to me, that feels exciting. That feels good. Recently, I had an online business where I taught people how to make beats. And when I first started that, I loved it a few years ago. I just don't love it anymore. And he has some really good signals, questions, ideas to ask yourself to know whether it's time for a change or not. I thought these were amazing and some great signs to tell if it's time to switch paths. One, you have no interest anymore in the mission that used to motivate you. True. Two, you feel an increase in energy at the prospect of ceasing involvement with the project. True. Three, the project almost seems silly or arbitrary. True. There was a time when I was like, man, I love this. I get to teach people beats. And now I'm like, life to me is more than just beats now. You know, it's about psychology, dating, relationships, masculinity, dark energy, shadow work. It's like all these things that I love. Now just beats feels kind of arbitrary. So for me, these signals, every time I've wanted to make a pivot in my life, these are three clear signals that I think are huge. When you know it's time to make a change, create space for it. Like it's not just going to fall out of the sky and hit you in the head. It's going to be kind of this slow wave and this thing that you kind of work towards, but you only know that you're working towards it if you really give yourself the space to listen. He's like, don't pursue a bunch of new women. Don't go out drinking with your buddies. Don't numb it with like video games or Netflix. He's like, take some time, really think about where you are. Give yourself that time, that space to like listen to what feels right and then go for it. Another idea that I really liked in here is that to get what you want, you have to be brutally honest with yourself, what your limits are, and be willing to change everything. Back in 2018, I knew my life was not going where I wanted to. I was bartending, I was a substitute teacher. Things were not going well for me. I sold my high school graduation present, a, a Yamaha alto saxophone just to pay my rent. I couldn't get a job. I was like, what happened to me? Life is not going where I want to go. I got so much more than this. I bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. I sold everything that wasn't bolted to the floor of my apartment. And I said, let's go figure it out abroad. You have to be willing to change everything. If you aren't willing to change everything, be honest with yourself. Cause you might say, oh, I really want to do X, Y, and Z, but do you really, what are you willing to change in order to get there? If you aren't willing to change, that's okay, but you got to be honest with yourself. Recently, I had an opportunity to pursue a music dream in LA. I said, let's do it. I moved out there. I took all my stuff. I got a car. I got a place. And I, I learned really quickly that what I thought I wanted wasn't what I actually wanted. And I had to be honest with myself. I ended up kind of lighting the opportunity on fire and leaving after a couple weeks because I realized the limits that I thought I had for myself for this, I was not willing to change everything in order to do what I wanted to do. And so back in the day I did, 
these days I have a much more clear vision of what I want. I wasn't as willing to make the change as I used to be. And that's okay. And so for me, that's been a really difficult conversation to have, but a really important one at the same time was to say, what are my limits? Know what they are and push up against them. Continue to expand those boundaries, but you got to be honest with yourself. When we're talking about limits, you have to know know where you're lying to yourself. And one of the best ways to do that is to have people who are going to keep it real with you. What the author says is that you have to have things in place to remind you who you are. Use people, books, stories, and prayer to remember who you are. Use aids to support your creation from this source. Read books that remind you of who you are. Spend time with people who inspire you and reflect the source to you. Meditate, contemplate, or pray daily so that you steep yourself in this source. There are certain books I come back to every single year that remind me who I am. There are certain traditions, things I do that help me remember who I am. And one of the biggest ones is having a men's circle or at least a group of other men that you can talk to that reflect back to you who you are because it's easy to lose track of that. When I was living in Medellin, there was a men's circle about a year ago now that I was a part of. And it was one of the biggest pieces in, in, in times of growth of my life because you had this group of guys that you trusted who would also be honest with you. Have people that act as a sounding board and are gonna check you on your bullshit when you're lying to yourself. Another point that he makes that I think is interesting is he says that serving yourself is actually serving your family because your family wants you to show up as the best version of yourself. And for your kids or for your partner, you got to be the best you. You got to bring the best you to those relationships. As kids, they learn through osmosis. If you're miserable and you aren't feeling it, your kids are going to notice. If your lady has to start taking care of you because you can't take care of yourself, that's not a great sexual dynamic. Get yourself right. Make sure you're showing up as the best version of yourself. Quality of time is more important than quantity of time. So make sure when you're there, you're present and then spend the time that you need so that you can feel like you're fulfilling your purpose. There's a whole nother piece to this book about women. For me, the biggest takeaway with women was don't analyze, empathize. Like a lot of the times as men, we want to fix things. That's kind of our nature. When women have a problem, what he says is it's feeling a lack of love. Show them love, like touch her arm, hold her, show her love. Just empathize, be there for her. Don't feel like you have to fix it. A lot of times she knows what she has to do. She's just venting to you. She wants to feel loved. I am guilty of this all the time. Jumping into fix it mode for me, it's really about how do I dial it back? Just empathize, be there and show love. And then we'll learn. We can talk about it more and we can fix the problem later. If you ever find yourself asking your woman questions about her mood while she is still in it, you're already on the wrong road. First, give her love through your eyes, touch, movement, and tone of voice. After the connection of love has been made, find out what remains to be talked about. So don't analyze, empathize. I just love that one. Another big takeaway for me, boom, boom, boom. Number two was praise, don't challenge. That often women are more motivated by words of encouragement than challenge. And I think often men were motivated by challenge. I bet you can't do this. That kind of like hater chip on the shoulder energy. He was like, nah. He's like, if you want your woman to do stuff, like praise her. Like rather than being like, oh babe, you're looking chunky. Like if you want your girl to go to the gym, be like, oh man, I love it when you work out. You look so sexy. Find ways to have a positive spin on it. And that'll be much more positive for your woman than coming at it with like that challenge or more of a negative point of view. Another piece to this was, that she'll never be perfect and don't try to fix her. The point isn't to have a relationship that's completely smooth all the time. You want somebody who's going to push you a little bit. Like that's where growth really happens. So don't try to fix her. Don't expect her to be perfect. The feminine energy is there to test you how solid of a man you are. The point is to find someone who challenges you, forces you to think in new ways, helps you grow. There are a lot of issues with women. Maybe the indecisiveness. Where do you want to go to eat? Oh, I don't know. You pick. It isn't a personality flaw. It's the chaos of the feminine energy. That's the whole point is it's like, it's to test you as a man, stay grounded and be decisive, which leads me to another point. Don't be so utilitarian that you lose the energy, right? He's like, be decisive rather than just being like, oh, wherever you want to go, babe. And just like having to be kind of just like, like lackadaisical, be decisive, embody that masculine energy and understand that yes, there's utility, especially when it comes to like parenthood or for your business partners, but don't let that utility kind of like overrun the fun kind of sexy piece, because that's equally important, especially if you want to maintain that kind of exciting relationship in the long term. Yes, you got to be friends. You need that utility, especially if you're parents, but to not completely let that take over the relationship. And one way to kind of maintain that polarity of masculine energy is sometimes to be more decisive to be like, hey, we're going away for this weekend. I'm not telling you where. Pack your bags, wear that dress. Some of the last points that I thought were really cool about women was discipline isn't suppression. He's like, you will always want other women. That's the fact of being a man. 
He's like, if you can't handle one woman, you haven't earned the right to have many women. Remember that self-discipline is not self-suppression. Suppression is when you resist and fight against your desires, keeping them as buried and unexpressed as possible. Self-discipline is when your highest desires rule your lesser desires, not through resistance, but through loving action grounded in understanding and compassion. If you can't do deep communion, rejuvenating passion, and spiritual happiness with one partner, discipline your desire for other partners until you get that part right. He's like, until you can get one partnership totally down, you're in the spiritual part, you're in the sexual part, like you're really in it, you've got the relationship thing down, then you can go mess around. But like, you don't really deserve to have all of these different partners until you really know how to have a partner. Last two pieces to this, I'm gonna wrap this up. One, decide what you want in a partner, that like all women have a different kind of temperature. Like some will be more cool, some will be more hot, like a little bit more feisty. And he's like, figure out what you like, and two, choose a woman who chooses you. Like if the woman's not into you, no matter what you do, you're already coming at it from a place of weakness. Like, yes, sometimes it might take that commitment, that pursuit, you know, the chase. Understand that there's something about that dynamic of when a woman is into you. There's so many times I can think about in my own life when I was just wasting my breath because the woman really didn't want me. Even though I thought she was amazing, I wanted all these things. It was like, dude, she, she's not into you. Like, forget about it. And I think that's an important delineation to have. Last piece to this book, he says, make space for the innate suffering of being human. And I love this. So but the first part is about purpose, concentric circles. Second part is about, you know, finding your woman, pleasing your woman. Don't analyze, empathize. The last one is like, make space to just be human. Turn the phone off to meditate, vision quest, plant medicine, whatever your thing is, making time just to be human, letting it all sink in, creating space for the inevitability of your own death. Those things are important. And so that part really resonated with me. And so there was a lot in this book that I loved, some really rad gems in here, a lot of crazy spiritual kind of mumbo jumbo, also some really rad takeaways, some good things in here that I think I'll continue to come back to, really helped change the way I think about the finding your purpose as well. So if nothing else, that was the biggest gem for me. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you as always as tuning in. Like, subscribe, smash all the buttons, and I'll check you on the next one. Peace.